things before uh, we get into this as a review here. Remember some of the characteristics and scientific concepts behind air, okay? Especially in our atmosphere. First of all, cold air is more dense than warm air, okay? So cold air tends to sink because the particles or molecules in air, when it's cooler and temperatures lower, remember, temperature is a measure of particle motion. So temperatures, uh, when they cool, air, the particles actually get closer together and they become more dense and they begin to slow down. Warm air, as it heats up, begins to expand and they those particles begin to lift up and rise. So warm air rises because it's less dense than cool air and cool air tends to sink. Now, cool or warm air also holds more moisture, okay? Warm air holds more moisture because those particles expand and they can just hold more water vapor. All right, we know that is humidity, humidity, which is the total moisture in our Earth's atmosphere. All right, so let's get started. Cold front. Now, a cold front, if you read here, marked by lines of blue teeth on a weather map, cold fronts happen when cold air that's denser and heavier than warm air pushes against the warm air and slides underneath like a wedge. The warm air is forced upwards and it rises as it cools, expands, and loses its ability to hold moisture, creating clouds and eventually precipitation and usually more intense thunderstorms. So when we drag this cold air, notice this cold air mass, when it comes in contact with the warm air mass, the warm air mass is pushed upwards. Okay, now warm air already rises. Okay, so if a cooler air mass that's more dense comes in and pushes that warm air up, remember what we said if warm air holds more moisture, then that moist warm air is going to be pushed up by the cold air mass, and that's going to create clouds because when water vapor cools at the top of the troposphere and it rises up to where temperatures are colder then they're going to condense and form clouds. Now, the, f the more forceful that cold air mass is, the uh, really the more storms you're going to get because the more rapidly that warm air is lifting up, it cools at a very fast pace, creating more clouds, and you could possibly get cumulonimbus clouds, which are storm clouds. So usually what comes along with a cold air mass is uh, heavy rain, storms, possibly lightning, maybe hail, um, thunderstorms, okay? All right, warm front. A warm front represented by red half circles on weather maps happen when warm air moves in on cold air, moves in on cold air. Being less dense than cold air, it rises above like in a cold front. But in this case, it pushes the cold air downwards against the earth and away. In the process, it cools, expands, and loses its ability to hold moisture, creating clouds and rain in the form of mild and spread out rainfall. That is opposed to condensed uh, thunderstorms. So, when we move this warm air towards the cool air, you notice the opposite is happening than what happened in the cold front. The warm air is less dense, cold air is more dense, so it's going to stay lower to the ground. But the warm air comes in and moves over the top or overtakes the cold air mass. Now, the warm air is still, if there's more, enough moisture in the air, and usually there is in warm air masses, then instead of rapidly going, uh, should I say, rising up, okay, increasing in altitude, it's going to slowly increase in altitude. So the cloud formation and condensation is going to occur at a slower rate and it's going to produce more widespread rain in cloudy days. Occluded front. An occluded front represented on weather maps by alternating purple half circles and triangles happens when a cold front overtakes a warm front. One body of cold air approaches another, and the warm air is trapped in the middle. It is sandwiched by the two colder air masses and forced upwards, expanding and losing its moisture to create clouds and precipitation. So... This, this is the only front that really has to do with three air masses. You have, uh, really, this, is, this right here in front, if you took this out, 
this cold air mass here, if you took this out of the equation, this is just a warm front. Notice that because you had a cold air mass already in place, warm air comes over it, uh, and overtakes it, which could possibly, you know, bring precipitation if enough moisture is in the air. But then on the back side of that warm front, okay, in that warm air mass, another stronger cold air mass comes in behind it or from the side, and it will literally occlude, okay? The opposite of include is occlude. That's why they call it an occluded front. It will literally occlude that warm air from the ground. It separates it from the ground. In turn, it pushes in that. That warm air mass gets trapped between the two cold, rises it up, and what do we have? The weather conditions. We have clouds, and if there's enough moisture in the air, precipitation. Last but not least, we have a stationary front. Represented on weather maps by an alternating cold and warm front line happens when two air masses with equal force meet and sit stationary in place. Stationary fronts can stay in deadlock for an extended period, the warm air condensing into clouds and precipitation. So, this one's not too complicated. The cold air mass and the warm air mass meet. And I tell my kids, it's like, it's like a battle, okay? They're battling it out because they're going right at each other, okay? In the front lines of that battle, that's where they meet, okay? And usually both of them have enough force where they will just sit there and they become stalled. Hence, the name stationary, okay? Stationary means standstill or it does not move. It's deadlocked, like the explanation said. And that warm air will still rise, okay? And the cold air still is more dense and tends to sink. The warm air still rises, cold air still sinks, but they will stall because their forces are similar to each other. Okay, so depending on usually what will happen in the stationary front, slowly but surely, the cold front will still win out because it's more dense and will slowly push that out. But for extended periods of time, they'll sit there and meet and that warm air just keeps getting pushed up and pushed up and pushed up, creating, if there's moisture in the air, long periods of precipitation, which there usually is.